PowerShell Pro Tools offers binding to the Avalonia UI project. Avalonia provides cross-platform UI support for Windows, Linux, and Mac that you can run in .NET Core, .NET Framework, and Mono. In this example, we're going to look at how to use the Avalonia, Avalonia bindings in PowerShell Pro Tools to allow you to create cross-platform UIs in PowerShell. Today's example, we're going to actually build a, a weather application using Open Weather Map. Open Weather Map provides a free API where you can actually get weather for uh, locations along, around the globe. So we're going to create a little UI where you can type in the name of your city and you'll receive the temperature, description, and humidity of uh, that particular city. So the first step is you're going to want to go into Visual Studio. You can install Visual Studio Community Edition uh, for free. In this example, I'm using Visual Studio 2019. Uh, the extension that you're going to want to install is Avalonia for Visual Studio. It provides a designer as well as project templates for Avalonia projects. Next, you're going to want to click File, Next, Pro or File New Project, search for Avalonia, and select the Avalonia application. Click Next, and let's name our Avalonia application. We're going to call it Weather UI. Click Create and it'll actually create the project for you and uh, you'll see the XAML at the bottom and a uh, blank designer at the top. If we build the project, the designer itself will load and you'll be able to see your window. In this example, my uh, window is blank and it just says, Welcome to Avalonia. So as you make changes in here, you'll notice the designer will update. So let's change the title to Weather UI and Let's just say, hello world. So now you can see I've updated my Avalonia uh, window and the designer is updating. Additionally, uh, we can start adding controls to this. So let's uh, get rid of this hello world text and put a stack panel. A stack panel is a control that also exists in WPF, so you might be familiar with it. It allows you to stack controls on top of each other without having to worry about the layout. The other thing I'm going to do is change the uh, height and width of this particular um, window. So we're going to actually set the design width to 600 and the design height to 200, as well as the width equal to 600 and then the height equal to six or 200. So now that will set the size of the window that we're actually creating. Um, then within the stack panel, let's actually create the controls to accept input. So I'm going to create a grid. So a grid, also available in WPF, allows you to lay out controls in uh, a grid row layout. So you can specify columns. I'm going to specify the size of my columns. And then I'm going to start putting controls inside my grid. I'm going to put a text box, or a text block, and put it in the first column, column 0. I'm going to give it a little margin so it puts a little spacing around the control. And then I'm going to say, enter city, so the user knows what to do. As you can see, the designer is updated with the text enter city. So now let's actually put a text box. So we're going to say text box name equals text city. So this is, uh, the name is specified so we can reference it later inside PowerShell. So now let's uh, put this in the second column. So we're going to say column 1. We're also going to give this a margin of 10. And uh, we're not going to put any content there. But as you can see, we now have a text box available. Uh, finally, we're going to put a button uh, that we can click to actually go and search uh, Open Weather Map. So we're going to put this in the final column of the grid. We're also giving this margin of 10 so it matches the other controls. And we're going to give it a name of um, oops, a name of button get weather. And then we're just going to give some text inside the button so that users know what's going to happen. So now we have a input control with a text box that you can click a button and get the weather. So let's add some controls for output. First, we're going to add a stack panel inside the stack panel. And we're going to put in some text blocks. Uh, rather than typing all these out, I'm just going to copy and paste the text blocks in here. So I've added several text blocks um, for temperature, description, I'm not going to do dew point, um, but humidity, and um, yeah. So now what we want to do is we want to be able to update these controls when you click Get Weather. 
So now that we have our Avalonia UI built, what we can actually do is we can pop over to uh, Visual Studio Code. So I'm actually going to get rid of all this code, and we're going to start over and say uh, XAML. Um, and we're going to get our uh, XAML code from Visual Studio and just copy and paste it over into Visual Studio Code. So now we have a, um, a XAML definition stored in a XAML variable. This is where you can start using the features of PowerShell Pro Tools. The first thing that I'm going to want to do is I want to, want to convert. I'm going to want to convert um, this XAML into an Avalonia window. So what we can do is we can use the convert to Avalonia window commandlet and specify the XAML that we want to convert. Uh, if I run this script, what will happen is I actually now have a Avalonia window that has been uh, created from this uh, XAML. Next, we want to find all the controls that we uh, put inside our XAML. So if you recall, I was providing names to each one of these controls. Uh, what I want to do here is actually use the find Avalonia uh, control commandlet to find those controls inside the window and then put them in, uh, in variables. So I'm finding the button for getting the weather. Uh, and then the other text boxes, or you know, the, the text box as well as the text blocks for the temperature, the description, and the humidity. So that provides the ability to uh, interact with these different components. So what we want to happen now is when I click the button, I want to be able to um, I want to be able to actually invoke the uh, Open Weather Map API, get information for the city that the user has entered and then populate the text boxes or text blocks that um, are on the form. So to do that, what we can do is we can actually bind a script block to the add click event handler. This is very similar to the way you would do it in WPF or even Windows Forms. Um, so in this case, I'm adding an on click handler. And when this is clicked, I'm going to uh, retrieve the city that the user has entered from the uh, text box via the text property. Then I'm going to invoke a REST method on the Open Weather Map uh, API, um, passing in the city as long, uh, along with my uh, app token. So you, you have to actually sign up for Open Weather Map to get an app token to uh, invoke these requests. You can just do that for free. Then from there, I'm going to do some formatting. So for the temperature, I'm going to convert it from Kelvin into Fahrenheit and then store it in the text temp um, control. And then uh, I'll get the description as well as the humidity and store all those in those variables. And then finally, in order to actually view our form, what we can do is run show Avalonia window. Uh, then you pass in your window. So just some steps. We created uh, the XAML that we need for this particular control. We converted it to an Avalonia window. We found the controls that we need necessary for interacting with our form. We added some uh, event handlers, in this case an, uh, an add click handler, so when they click the button something happens. And then finally we show the Avalonia window. So if I run this script, what you'll see is now we have a weather UI that's popped up where we can enter a city. In this case I'm going to enter Haley, the city I live in. And as you can see it went out to open weather map. It's currently 49 degrees, about 50 degrees with scattered clouds and humidity uh, at 66. One of the great things about Avalonia is that it works cross-platform. So the, uh, the tool that I just built here inside uh, VS Code um, on Windows, I can actually use that exact same code to run on Linux. So I have a Linux Ubuntu, uh, I think 16.4 um, installation running here. And what I can do is actually just copy and paste that exact same script um, into VS Code running PowerShell 6.2 here um, in my Linux Ubuntu uh, VM. So now when I execute the script, what you'll notice is I get a uh, UI that works exactly the same as it does in Windows. So if I type in Haley again, I'll get the same details that I got um, from Windows. So in this video, we went over how to use uh, the Visual Studio extension for Avalonia, as well as the PowerShell Pro Tools bindings for Avalonia in PowerShell Core to make UIs that work on both Windows and Linux.